Hi, dear friends. So in this video, we'll be talking about the uh, lubrication maintenance for the uh, Borsch BS machines. So as you see here is uh, one of the Borsch machines and BS 80 times. Okay, and now we'll start to have some uh, explanation about how the lubrication works and uh, what we can do to prevent some lubrication failure or sometimes have too much lubrication. So here you can see here is one of the uh, lubrication distributor. So when the lubrication starts to work, the pump will pump oil into serially, pump into each of the distribution. And uh, all of the uh, lubrication distributor is connected serially. So it's connected from the pump and to one of the distributor and then to the another. So serial connection. So basically, we can do the lubrication manually. I mean, put on, you press the uh, lubrication manual button, or you can set the lubrication intervals. For example, now we are setting one, every 100 cycle have one lubrication, okay? And sometimes you see, sometimes you see there is have too much lubrication oil. So you don't want that to consume too much oil, and that's too much, contaminate the parts, and then this is where you can increase the interval so they're not too much wasted oil. Okay, and if the uh, cycle time of the product is fairly not very short and you increased the uh, lubrication interval, but you still have too much lubrication oil consumed, then it's probably have something to do with a damaged channel in the, in the uh, lubrication distributor. And so now I'm gonna explain you how this thing work and how can we check for this part. Okay, now I'm going to activate the lubrication pump manually. You see now the lubrication pump is working. You can see the dial indicator turns up from all the way from the yellow zoom to the uh, green zoom. That's meaning now the pump is activating. So once the uh, lubrication pump starts activating and then the grease all the oil will be pumped into each channel. So when the lubrication agent goes into the distributor, it's not going any further. It only accumulates into the each channel. And when they are accumulated, you will see the pins come out. And then it will just stop there until the pump uh, drop off the pressure, release the pressure. And then that's the time the lubrication oil goes into each channel. So I'm gonna show you how this pins comes out. You see it right there, all the pins comes out. But the oil will only accumulate into each channel, but not going any further. Okay, and when the pump stops, the pin will go in, push the, the lubrication into each channel. So this kind of design makes sure every channel has the same amount of the lubrication. Now I'm going to turn off. You see, now the pin goes in and the lubrication goes forward. So, so here you see our kind of a lubrication system. They are not straight forward. They're not going straight forward. They're, they go to each channel, but accumulate they are not going further until the pressure drops off and then the lubrication oil could come to each channel. So it's not th those old kind of style, the lubrication from the pump and go all the way through all the channels with different design. So basically, if the pump work one time, no matter how many seconds, it will only have the same amount of lubrication in each channel. Doesn't matter how long the time is. So, you see here, the lubrication time we're setting is 30 seconds. And the 30 seconds is the, uh, 30 seconds is the minimum we can have. Oh, I'm sorry. So the 30 seconds is the minimum we can set. We cannot set it more lower. Sometimes people are asking, so can we turn the 30 seconds off a little bit more so we can consume less lubrication? But it doesn't work like that. You know, seems now all the distributor are connected seriously. So if we said, for example, only five seconds, so maybe the first distributor have a lot of lubrication consumed, but the last one or the last two may never have lubrication. So that's why we, we have to make it 30 seconds to make sure 
all the distributor is accumulated with the grease. So it doesn't matter how much time the pump turns on. Once it's fully charged, it always has the same amount of oil for the, each channel. Okay, now I'm going to show you how the lubrication oil comes out. So you see, firstly we turn on the lubrication. You see now the uh, pump start working and it pumps the lubrication into each channel. And, uh, and now the pimps comes out. But you see, no any oil comes out from here. Because now it's only accumulating into each channel. Now until the pump turns off, you will see the oil come out. You see? That's how it work. So here we got the oil come out. So basically, sometimes if the uh, lubrication interval is set fairly high and the uh, cycle time is fairly high, but it still have consumed too much lubrication, that may have something to do with a bad lubrication channel, which means normally there have no oil comes out when the pump working and uh, the oil only come out when the pump turns off. But when it's bad, the oil starts to come out when the pump is working. So in that way, when the pump is working, it always have oil comes out from here. So that's why how you get too much lubrication oil. Okay, now, now we're looking at one of the uh, lubrication pressure switch. Normally this is mounted at the end of the lubrication line. So if there have any leakage, maybe a broken tube or a broken line, and then the lubrication pressure will not build up in the system. So in that case, this switch will have no signal sent back to the controller. And then the controller will alarm out when the uh, lubrication failed. Okay, for example, now I'm going to activate the uh, lubrication and you will see the feedback light up on here. So now I activate it. Three two, one, that's it. So now we've got a feedback. This means the circuit is okay and the pressure build up, which means lubrication is okay. If there got no feedback when the uh, lubrication work and then the controller will alarm out. The lubrication failed. You see, now we have no feedback. So that's how you get the lubrication failed alarm. You got no feedback which probably means the uh, one of the circuit is opened, broken tube or uh, a broken point, or it could be also the, uh, the pressure switch get damaged. So this get give you an idea how to uh, sort out the issues. Okay, now let's see here. You see this one, a white tube with a, with a black, with a black rum seam. And that thing is actually have a magnet, magnet inside the black rubber. And that is a leveling sensor. Okay, now for example, now the oil in that lubrication pump is low. So if we turn on the uh, manual lubrication or the automatic lubrication start work, and then you will see the alarm. Lubrication level low. So this is how they work. Lubrication level low. So when you see this alarm, please go to the, uh, lubrica uh, the lubrication pump to see how the lubrication oil in the tank level is. Maybe it's too, too low or maybe the sensor get a problem. Okay, some of the machines are equipped with a manual grease pump for the die height adjustment. Okay, for this specific one, the model number is NKGH1804. So for this one, it's connected to the same kind of lubrication distributor, so the uh, theory is same. So when the pump is working, it's only accumulate, accumulating the distributor until the pump, the pressure inside that pump drops off and then the lubrication grace could go to the E channel. So how could we pump and release the pressure for this specific pump? So to pump this one, you just simply push in, push in, push in. And until you see the uh, distributor have the pins comes out, which means the distributor is fully accumulated, fully charged. So now we need, it. So if now you keep pumping, the pin just keep there, not going in. So the lubrication will never come out. 
So what do you do now? You need to pull back this handle to release the pressure. So this is a release bar. You pull it back. Now the pressure gets released and the pins goes in and the lubrication comes out. Okay, now here, this is a different model of a manual lubrication pump. So this one, the model number is RSE-2.0A. So this one is a little bit different. So to pump in, you just keep the handle, push in, push in, something like this, in the middle, not fully in. So this is pumping the grace into the uh, distributor. So when you see the pins on the distributor that comes out, it means the distributor is fully charged. So now what you need to do is to discharge the pump so the oil in the distributor can, could come out. Okay, so how we discharge this pump? Simply push all the way in like this. Just like that. Okay, and for some machine, they are equipped it with the uh, automatic grease pump like this. So it's working mostly for working for the tie bars. So they do not have too much, you know, oil in the motor area, so the uh, product gets less contaminated. So for this kind of uh, automatic grease pump, it also have a level sensor right here. So at the winter, especially when the uh, grease inside becomes solid. So the, sen the level sensor may not detect the correct level of the grace. So sometimes you get alarm. The, uh, the uh, automatic pump to get level, uh, the lubrication level low, something like that. So when you see that alarm happens, you better take, come back here and check the, uh, the grace there. Maybe, maybe it gets solid. So maybe you can fill in some, uh, you know, some oil inside and mix the grace and oil together. To soft the grace and then that will be working again okay now regard lubrication for the injection unit there have a label you see the lubrication grace for every 15 days so we got four lubrication nipples here two here two there the lower two is for the guide rail of the injection unit and the higher two is for the uh, transmission shaft bearings inside close to the screw motor. Okay, so this is so much about the uh, lubrication and uh, the maintenance about the lubrication. If you have any question, please feel free to contact us, the Borsch North America. Thank you.